Alright, Hayes Mega here. Uh, so this this part of the video will be uh, focusing on making the front uh, axle slider for the for the Suron Supermoto Light B setup. Um, you could probably put these on the dirt wheels too, but but uh, yeah. So like I mentioned, the reason that you want to have axle sliders on your bike if you go to a racetrack is so if you go down, um, your bike slides on the surface. It doesn't dig in and cartwheel and yard sale, you know, that kind of thing, so. Um, do I think this bike really needs it? No, not really. Um, but they still want you to have it. Um, they, I think these handlebars are wide enough where, like, if the bike goes down, it's just going to slide on the hand. It's going to slide on the handlebars and the handguards. Okay, so. so yeah, so that's the reason to have them. Um, if you go to a racetrack, they're going to want you to have this stuff. Uh, uh, fortunately, on the light bead, there's no liquids that will spill out the bike if you crop it, so... That's one less thing you have to worry about if you go to race track. Uh, um, so, so these are the ingredients that I got to make it today. So I'm kind of just doing this as a okay. So long the ingredients to, to make this uh, the for the front supermoto slider, what I'm going to use are skateboard wheels. So this is the number one ingredient that you need. Um, this is the one that you know that probably costs the most, and I can't make skateboard wheels on my own. So they're made out of urethane. Um, if you guys are wondering, uh, urethane is, uh, or polyurethane, and, um, and you want, you want to use the hardest material you can get. So these are like, uh, like 99A or 100 or 101A, or, um, that's, that's how they measure it. It's, it's measured under like durometer or something. Um, when I used to rollerblade, um, we, we would use the, uh, the stiffer, the, um, the harder wheels, the 100, 100A wheels. Because they slide better, they slide on the when you when you grind on the curbs and stuff, they slide better, and that's what you want it to do. You want it to slide, you don't want it to grip. So that's why you use the hardest material you can get. So you can find yourself some like 9900 or 101 somewhere around that area um, durometer um, skateboard wheels. Um, you could probably use some rollerblade wheels, but I think um, just find some really small diameter ones. You don't need them really big donut looking ones. So. So this is what we're gonna use. These are about, you can get these for about 10 bucks. I got, I think I got, I got these for like about 10 bucks on eBay. They're really cheap. Um, or you can go to the local, your local skateboard shop. They'll probably have them. I just got some plain black ones um, for my, you can get them in a whole bunch of different colors too. I have like some some kind of lime green ones for my Kawasaki also, so. But my bike, this bike is all black, so we're gonna use black ones, so. Uh, for the front, you're gonna need two. So I'm gonna take two. Okay, those. so the second, part that you that's probably really important that you need is all thread so this is a um, 5 16 dash 18 uh, all thread and it says it's plated I think it's zinc plated that's what it means so so if it's zinc plated it is more uh, uh, corrosion resistant it won't rust so that's good that's a good thing because it's on the bike it's going to be outside so um, this is one I used for the uh, the KLX to make a supermoto slider, but it was for the back though. So um, this one, I don't think we'll have a problem doing the front because there's a hole here in the axle. So it goes straight through. Perfect. Um, you can get them. Um, I think this one is a. Uh, this is two feet right here. Um, this is how you get them. Uh, this one's already been cut down. Uh, I may need to cut it a little bit more, but we're gonna have to just cut this to size so it fits perfectly on this, and then. Uh, and then just bolt the wheels on. So, and then you're just gonna need like a bunch of bolts and stuff uh, that fit the all thread. Uh, so it's five sixteenths by like by eighteen or something. They're pretty. Co these are pretty common bolts that you can find at Lowe's. This is where I got them. Uh, you can probably get them at Home Depot. Pretty much any hardware store. They're really easy to find, um, and that's the reason I use them instead of like metric. Uh, the metric stuff is a little. It's more expensive and it's harder to find in the U.S. So. Uh, for for this, we will be using uh, we'll be using a closed end. I think I forgot what it's called, but it's it's like there's a closed end nut 
So you want to find one of these. You could use just a regular net and a locking net. So this is a this is all this is a nylon locking net. So that way it doesn't back off. Um, so this one will just kind of like this will be the end of it. You're basically making a very long bolt is what you're making, um, and so you're gonna need those two, um, and then a bunch of washers. So I got a bunch of washers in here. Um, you're gonna find you're gonna want to find a washer that fits inside the uh, inside here. So go find a washer that fits in there that lets your that lets your bolt. Um, Go through it so um, it doesn't have to be like perfectly perfect fit but as close as possible all right so those are the ingredients so let's let's go knock this out <laughs> so this is kind of my work area right here um so we're just i'm just gonna go take two of these guys out of the package right here oh, fresh roller blade bars <laughs> fresh skateboard wheels probably could put them on roller blades so who knows so there you go. This is what they, the two looks like. These are what we're going to use. They're pretty hard. Okay. And then so the next part we're going to want to uh, we're going to want to find a washer that fits in there. So see this this one is too loose. It kind of moves around in there too much. You want it to be tight enough where like you can just squeeze it in there and it'll stay right in there. So all right, go find one. Again. Okay. So I, I managed to find one one washer. So. Uh, one that like fit perfectly so if you're having some trouble you could probably get like a, a a skateboard bearing or something some old kind of bearing and stick it in there but i'm just going to use a washer so um so this one ha happens to just fit in there perfectly but we got to get it in there so we got to get it so we can press it in there and it's, we could pretty much just push it in with everything it's like the perfect size and if you're having trouble driving it in like that just get a washer uh get a get a socket and just beat it in there So one of them is ready. So also make sure you're obviously make sure that your all thread goes in there. This one is just the perfect size. This is the perfect size washer. I could not find another one. So what I'm gonna have to do is uh, this is another. This is a 516 flat washer. Uh, I'm gonna grind it down so so it does fit in there. So so I'll be back after this. So so we got one. And so if you gotta make one, if you gotta make one. Then, uh, then make one, or or use a rollerblade bearing. Do do what do what you can to find something that you know that fits. Uh, you don't want it to be too loose. Yeah, you don't want it to be loose. You want it to be in there pretty tight, so uh, so like it doesn't fall off. If it's part of it, then it, it makes it easier to install. All right, so I'm gonna go cut this down to size. Oh, you know what? I should have I should have left that one out and used that as a, a, a blueprint for this one. <laughs> maybe I can maybe I can just press it out again. All right, here's the Okay, so I got it out, and I'm just going to go trace trace the area around it so I know how much to grind off of this. It's a lot, dude. <laughs> okay, so I've uh, traced it. So basically, I just got to grind off uh, uh, all the black, basically. Okay, black. so Hayes Omega has managed to fabricate uh, another washer. Um, yeah, just do your best to find one that fits properly. Um, all right, so, so I'm going to go... I already took the other one out again, so I'm just going to show you again. So, just got to put that in there. Oh, this one goes in nicely. Okay, and if it doesn't go in all the way, go ahead and get your well, socket pounded in until it bottoms out. There's a little, there's a little step here that it'll sit on. So hopefully this one is okay. Okay, this one's okay. It's a little, this is the one I just made. It's a little tight. I might want to. I may want to yeah, grind it. I think I've grinded it enough, or maybe I can push it in. Okay, so there we go. I got it in there. Uh, what I did is I grinded this a little bit, just a little bit. Don't don't try to grind the wheel too much because it, it makes a big mess. It, all this this dust comes out and everything. I I grinded another wheel to get it to fit on something, and that's what happened. Um, but so so there. Now we have two wheels with two washers uh, pressed into them. And uh, and yeah, so we're ready to. to okay. Continue. So the next step is you want to get your all thread uh, and cut it down the size. So this one is pretty pretty close to how I want it already. So um, I'm gonna put the end on it. Okay. 
and then you may maybe you want to get a wrench in and snug that down a little bit. I'm just gonna do it hand tight, it's not gonna go anywhere. And we're gonna go start putting it through the axle. Okay, so next step is you wanna get your you wanna get one of your sliders and push that through there like that. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like for the most part. If you can get it so both of them could be closed in like this, that'll be even better because these are really smooth and they slide really easily. So go ahead and feed it through the other side of the axle. I can find the hole. Okay. And the 516 fits perfectly through, through this axle. So it actually works out pretty well. And then go put your other one in. So doesn't quite fit. I know it doesn't quite fit us straight. They're, they're kind of like a, they're kind of like cockeyed like this a little bit. But um, if what you I think you can do, you might be able to add a wash. You might be able to add a spacer to that. Hmm, that's a good question. Do you want it to be cockeyed like that? Not really. Huh? Okay, so here's just here's what's going on here. It's probably hard to see from your angle. But uh, these skateboard wheels are too wide for the front axle. So you see, see that um, this kind of tapers inward. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make a spacer for it. I think just enough so it goes straight like that. So we can't quite cut the all thread quite yet because this thing doesn't fit flush. It fits fits at sun. I, I mean, at a mat, I guess I guess if you have it a little bit at an angle, it doesn't matter. But I would rather have it like straight, you know. Um, so we're gonna make. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a spacer that goes out. It goes over the, um, the axle, basically a washer, um, and then we're gonna we're gonna space it out until it gets past this here. So kind of annoying, but all right. I didn't know that it was gonna interfere with. I didn't know that this was so such an angle. Look at this one. The back part is straight. It's just such. It's just the way they designed this. Why couldn't they just made this flat all the way, man? Alright, so Hayes Omega has kind of found something that will work. Um, so these are uh, these are sway bar bushings that I had lying around. Um, I have, have a box full of old sway bar bushings just in case I need them for some kind of project. And lo and behold, here we are on a, working on a project. So um, so the idea behind this is uh, this is going to sit in here and act as a like, kind of washer or spacer. Um, it might be a good idea to put a bearing in here if you got one. Uh, I, oh, for now I'm not going to do anything. Uh, so it's going to be kind of like that, and then this is going to be this is going to be your spacer. So, so that's why I said uh, don't. You know, that's why we couldn't cut the cut the hole yet. So kind of mock it up right now. So, so we're going to take our all thread, and we're going to put our wheel through it. Okay. And then we're going to put one of the spacers, our sway bar bushing. And just make sure, you just got to make sure it's, uh, it's, uh, it's small enough to fit over the axle, basically. Let's go ahead and thread that through the axle. Small enough to thread through the axle, but, but not, uh, but not big enough, not big enough where, like, it'll, it'll interfere with the, uh, It'll interfere with the whatchamacallit. Okay, and then, then you go put your uh, your spacer on the other side. It actually fits perfectly. Yeah, it does fit perfectly. Damn, it's flush. And then put this over here. Okay, and then uh, and so that's what we got right there. Um, <laughs> okay. Get a little closer look at that. Okay, so here's what I got going on in the back here. Um, so we got our skateboard wheel here. This is one of the ends right here, and then the all thread is going between the whole axle, and then and then you got your my sway bar bushing here. These are just like regular sway bar bushings that you can get like at any automotive shop. And if they don't fit, you can grind it a little bit too. So just just be creative. Now, alternatively, you could probably just use a stack of washers. Use a bunch of washers. Maybe. Get, find a washer that's like the same diameter as the uh, the axle, 
and then just stack like a bunch of them like just like five of them or something uh, if you don't if you can't find anything um, you could probably use a spacer like this I, mean, I got a bunch of different kind of spacers everywhere so projects like this but, but I think this works better um, but and I just it's something I just had lying around so I mean I, it makes it helps me use like stuff that I got lying around you know um, so that's that's how it's gonna look it sticks out quite a bit but that's okay you want it to stick out um, so you have something there's something to touch the ground you know if, uh, if you go down okay so so now what we're gonna have to do is uh, cut the all thread so, okay so now everything that is in there is sandwiched the only the last part of the puzzle is uh, the uh, the locking nut right here and we're not gonna put that on quite yet um, I suppose you could you could thread it on all the way um, but uh, what we're gonna do we're just gonna we're just gonna so just make sure you press it all the way and then uh, and then just mark off where you're gonna cut it off so get, make sure you leave a little extra just in case you don't cut it flat and then you can cut it down the size if it's too too long okay so if you're using uh, if you're using the long one you're gonna have a lot of extra coming out you're gonna have like about like that much extra, you're gonna have to cut a lot out. But this, for in my case, I didn't have to cut out a whole lot, but but it, it came in handy. Uh, all right, so now we're gonna take this out, take all of this out, okay? And then we're gonna go cut where our mark is on the all thread. Where's it right here? Cut the mark right here. Okay, hope I didn't screw it up. So I cut it pretty straight. I think this may be able to go in here without much fuss. Just make sure you cut it really straight. Okay, it does go in. Um, also, additionally, if uh, if you're having trouble getting it in, I think uh, I think it's called chamfering or something. Um, grind the edges down so they're so it's 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 not it's not rough, and it might help. Uh, I got this. I actually have this. Tool. I have this special tool that does that. So basically, it rounds off the the, the t edges, so it's nice and smooth. So I mean, you're actually supposed to put this on a girl, but I think I just use this. I'll just do it with my hand. Very handy tool to have. It uh it deburs it. I think is what it does. Okay, well there it goes. Alright, so let's go okay. put it on. So, we got all our ingredients ready, so let's go see if this fits. So, um, this is a 14 millimeter, I found that, and this is a 13 millimeter. So, just go ahead and get your appropriate sockets out. Sockets would probably be the best to use. Go ahead and throw it, thread it through the back of the axle. Find it. Hi, buddy. Okay. There you go. Go ahead and put your spacer in. Okay. And then go ahead and put your slider. And then go ahead and put your locking nut. Additionally, you could probably put extra washers if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm going to hold it on the other side with my 14. Close the inside and then uh, tighten it. This is the wrong one. one. Okay. 13 here. And if you need to shorten it, just shorten it. You don't want it to stick out too much. It's probably going to have a lot of give too. You don't have to have it super tight. Okay, so I think that's it. That's good. It doesn't have to be really tight. So so the good thing is uh, we have a lock washer. Okay, there we have it. We got it installed. So uh, if I wanted to, I could probably grind this down a little bit so it doesn't stick out so much. Um, or we could put another one of these cap nuts on it. And it'll look, it'll look kind of sweet. 
on both sides. Um, but anyway, that's what this side looks like. Um, yeah, it actually worked pretty good, and that'll work. That'll protect. That'll protect your uh, your forks from getting uh, rashed on it uh, if you ever go down. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, and it'll, it'll probably keep your axle from coming out too, because it's got something to hold your axle in. So that's a good thing. Um, and it has a locking nut here, so we don't have to worry about this backing out accidentally. Um, and the other side is like a closed end, so uh, if I wanted to, I could cut this down a little. It doesn't have to be super tight. Like you can, you could probably rotate this. That's pretty tight actually. Yeah. It has a little bit of give, but but it, what it's what it's designed to do is just to slide and then take the take take the. Um, it's supposed to protect your forks, you know, and your axle, and it's supposed to let your bike slide when it goes down. So, uh, but yeah, it actually turned out pretty good. Um, if you wanted to cut this shorter, so this thread part wasn't exposed so much, um, you could do that. Um, it might be it's probably it's like a tad too long, or or you can add a washer, um, add add some more washers to it, um, is if you don't want it to stick out too much. I think that's okay. That's not a whole lot. Um, you don't want a whole lot of metal sticking out. So that's what once the, that side looks like. Let's go over to the other side. That's what this side looks like. That's what it looks like from the top. Pretty dope. Worked out pretty good. This side moves a little bit. It's okay. So yeah, there it goes. Works out pretty well. It shouldn't interfere with any. It's just, all of this doing is just going straight through your axle. You know. Um, good stuff. Alright, so that's how you make your front Supermoto slider for uh, for your Hades Omega spec uh, uh, Supermoto slider for uh, the Suron Light B with the Supermoto set. Uh, you could do it with the dirt wheels too uh, if you wanted. If you wanted, uh, it would probably work with the dirt wheels also, no problem. So that's the front. That should be like kind of the easiest. Uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I didn't know. The biggest curveball was this. I didn't know that this was like. It's in, instead of going straight out, it goes like at, ang at an angle like that. So that kind of made it difficult. So, so yeah, um, a uh, sway bar bushing is what I used. Like I said, you could use a washer to space it out. You probably use washers like this. You know, as long as it fits, as as long as it fits within the axle. The axle is pretty big. So, um, but it just so happened I had these uh, these sway bar bushings lying around, and um, and try to get some that are about the same size. Um, if anything, if anything, I could have got one that's a little shorter, um, smaller. These ones stick out a little bit, but that's okay. It's okay if it sticks out. That's what it's, they're supposed to do, you know. Um, yeah, so it worked out. It worked out pretty well. So you can tell he's mega kind of just made it up as he went along, but uh, <laughs> uh, it worked out. So the next thing we have to do is uh, is the rear, and that that'll be a that'll be a different video clip. We'll do the rear, and then we'll do the um, the foot peg sliders next, and then and then we'll head to the track. <laughs> we'll be ready to head to the track. All right. Hope you guys learned something. That's the Hades Omega Spec uh, front front Supermoto slider system. <laughs> Here's what we got. Uh, also, another thing I wanted to point out is if you ever get a flat tire with uh, um, with these sliders on here. Um, you're gonna have to carry extra tools around. You're gonna need the 13 and the 14 um, socket to get it out. Um, you might be able to use a wrench on one end, um, but they're kind of like inside there, so it, it'll make it hard to get out. So um, I don't recommend riding using these on the street uh, unless you have the tools with you. You know, um, I still have I have yet to get make a toolkit for uh, for this bike to take me to, to take with me when I ride on the road, but. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's just one thing I just wanted to point out. Like, it makes it more difficult to take your wheel out because you got more more crap to take out before you got to take the wheel off. Um, that's yeah. So that's all. That's the only thing I wanted to point out. Um, you're gonna have to carry extra tools, maybe, if uh, yeah, if you if you need to take your wheel off. All right, here's my out.